Yo, yo, welcome. Today we're going to do a highly requested video on NSB or Nike Shoebot. This will be a full comprehensive guide covering Nike sneakers along with Shopify. NSB was my first bot I ever purchased. I ran it for two years straight before switching over to Wrath and then Valor. Some of my best hits to date have been with NSB and I'm very excited to get my hands on a copy and I'm even more excited to show you guys what this bot can do. Before we go into setups, the first thing you should get familiar with is the bot's UI. On the left hand side, you're going to find all the tabs you need in order to run the bot. The home symbol is where your tasks are located. Next is your proxy list, followed by your billing profiles, then captchas monitors, accounts, and profiles. And Copt is where you can see all your purchases that you've made with NSB. If you are opening up NSB for the first time, there are two things that I would recommend doing before starting. First, make sure that you connect your Cook Group's monitors to NSB. You can do that by selecting the Monitor tab, then hit the little Discord icon at the top to sign in. Once you are signed in, you want to hit the little plus sign. Find your Cook Group server. Your Cook Group should have monitors. Make sure to connect a Shopify filtered and a Nike Live. Doing this will help us with restocks. I'll cover that later on in the video. Once you have connected the monitors, I recommend setting up a Discord webhook. Every bot has this feature. This is how you can get notified via Discord when you cop. First thing you want to do is create your own Discord server. Within your Discord server, right click on any text channel and select integrations, create webhook, click on the webhook and copy the webhook URL. Going back to NSB to the profile tab, on the right you will see a little symbol for webhooks. Click on that and paste the URL. If you press test, it will send a test webhook so you can see for yourself. Now that we've got that simple stuff out of the way, let's talk about botting Nike sneakers. When botting Nike sneakers, there are three resources you will need to get your hands on. Accounts, proxies, and billing profiles. Accounts are a one-time purchase, Proxies are reoccurring, typically monthly, and the billing profiles are something that you make. For accounts, there are a ton of providers. I personally would recommend XYZ. It's pretty straightforward. You'll get a list of email, colon, password. You paste them into your bots. When you're creating your billing profiles for Nike, the email associated with your Nike account needs to be the email within your billing profile. This is how the bot links your profile with your accounts. You will have to deal with IMAP for a one-time email code for your Nike accounts. I'll explain how to do that when we get to that step. Just as with accounts, the same goes with proxies. There are a ton of providers. Just make sure they are ISP proxies and in the description of the product, they say they support Nike sneakers. And again, you're just copying and pasting the entire list into the bot. For each Nike account you run, there needs to be a credit card and billing and shipping information tied to that account. How botters are able to get their hands on different cards is we use companies that provide virtual credit cards. In short, how it works, it's kind of similar to a prepaid debit card as it doesn't matter what the name or billing info is associated with the card. If you can imagine getting a $100 Visa gift card and you order something online, it doesn't really matter what info you put in for the billing and shipping. Some providers you will need to connect your debit card or bank account for funds. Others you will have to load money into like your account and some of them are based on credit. Some providers that work are Privacy, Capital One Eno, Edge, Slash Banking, and Amex. I personally use Privacy. So once you have that figured out how you're going to obtain new cards, let's talk about account and billing profiles for Nike. The idea here when creating profiles is to use a clever method to prevent Nike from filtering your entries on drop. Each and every profile you create needs to be completely different looking from the next. Name, phone, email, and address needs to be completely unique between profiles. For every single address, you can stretch it to about 10 billing profiles by jigging or altering your address. By making these slight changes in your address, it tricks Nike into thinking all of your entries are coming from a different person. I will give you a quick breakdown on how to do it. 
All right, I'm going to show you how to jig real quick. The one that I have up top is an example, and it's not altered at all. This can be your first profile. You don't need to jig on your first one, but everything after that, you want it to be jigged, and you want it to be completely different from the next one. So if the first one is Joe Smith, my second one is going to be Mike Smith. I'm keeping the last name the same. You don't have to do that, but it's just good for your local FedEx guy. Uh, you can add three random letters to the beginning of your address. So SFD 2650 Main Street. The third line you can keep you can keep the same. You don't have to change that. Going on to the next one, I have so Sophia Smith F-2 2650 Main. I spelled out street and then I added lot four. Daniel Smith, I did 2650 LPF Main street apartment two kayla smith i did i t actually spelled out the two 2650 2650 main street mike smith i did 2650 and i put a comma in the middle of main and harry smith i added an extra letter in main and then i added uh, an extra three letters at the end. So this is essentially how you jig your address. The most important thing when doing this is making sure that each one it look, just looks completely different from the rest. This is how you get past Nike's filtering. Once you have an idea how to jig, you want to start by creating your billing profiles. Under the billings tab, hit the plus sign under all and start creating your profiles. Remember, each one needs to look completely different from the next, and the sneakers account email needs to be in the billing and shipping. This might be tedious at first, but once you get your accounts logged in, then it's smooth sailing. Once you've created all of your profiles, you want to group them together. Hit the plus sign by group, name it, and start selecting all the profiles you had previously made. Now you're ready to get sessions for your accounts. Before heading over to the account tab, I recommend pasting your account info on a text file. If you have XYZ, you need to add the IMAP credentials to the end of your account. So if I have my credentials right here, I want to grab the username and add it to the back of the email colon password followed by the at the XYZ store. Hit the colon symbol again and then put in your password. Your accounts should look like this before you paste them into your bot. If you're using something other than XYZ for your accounts, I'll leave the rip written IMAP guide from NSB in the description. Once this is done, go to the account tab and create a new group. Make sure that Nike is checked and add your Nike accounts. Make sure the group is highlighted, then press the plus sign on the right. For site, you want Nike US. Go ahead and select your profile group with your sneaker account emails. Select your proxy list and then paste your accounts from the text file. You can select fill address and card if this is your first time setting up accounts. Hit submit. Now that you have everything set up, you can go ahead and start each task one by one. My example accounts aren't XYZ, but if you're using XYZ, then the task will ask for a one-time email code in order to sign in. If you pasted your IMAP credentials correctly in the account setup, then after you start a task, it will automatically pull those co codes from the master email for you. This may take a minute, but it will be automatic and you don't have to do anything. Like I mentioned before, my example accounts are not from XYZ. I do have the master Gmail to pull codes, so I will start one and paste the code manually so you can visually see what I'm talking about. So as you can see, I started a session. It's attempting to sign in and it's going to ask me for a code. I'm gonna go into my Gmail account and copy and paste that code. After you've obtained a session for your first account, go ahead and make sure the rest are signed in ready to go. Once this is completed, you're finally ready to start some tasks for Nike. Go to the task tab, hit create a new group and bring up task creation. For quantity, you wanna put the amount of accounts that you have. I have 11, so I'm gonna put 11. For site, we're gonna choose Nike US. For input, we're gonna put the SKU, which should be provided by your cook group. NSB supports multi-SKU, so if you were running for an adult in grade school size, this is how you would input that. I would first put in the adult SKU first, then space, then I would add a bracket and start adding the sizes that I wanted for that SKU. Once I have those sizes, I'm gonna close that bracket I'm gonna do a semicolon, a space, then the grade school skew, 
followed by a space, a bracket, then the grade school sizes, close bracket. If you were just running one SKU, then you would just throw in the one SKU without the brackets. Mode is going to be normal for your typical Leo and Dan's. Shock drop is obviously for shock drops. If you inputted sizes like I did for the multi SKU, then you can leave sizes blank. Otherwise, fill out your desired size. And finally, make sure that you select your account group. As far as the options on the bottom, I leave blank. Hit submit. Once you have everything created, here comes the easy part. All you have to do is start your tasks about an hour before the drop. I would definitely test this the night before, especially if you're brand new to this, just to make sure that everything is set up and ready to go. Once you've reached this point, all you need to do for future releases is come into your task group and edit the SKU to whatever shoe is releasing. One last thing, if you want to set up for Nike Flow restocks, create some blue tasks with the shared monitor option. Go back to task creation, select Nike US, put in your SKU and desired sizes. You want to uncheck login. You do not want to use your Nike profiles slash accounts on Nike Flow restocks. Use a regular credit or debit card and run those profiles multiple times. You don't want to create more tasks than you have proxies, but ideally you can run the same profile a hundred times if you want. I've hit multiples on the same card for Nike Flow. So select your profiles, then hit advance and use shared monitor. If you connected your Cook Group's Nike monitor, like I mentioned before, it should be searching through that. Once you've done that, hit submit and you should see some blue tasks monitoring for whatever Nike SKU you put in. Important to note, you cannot use that multi-SKU setup for flow. You have to use individual SKUs. And that's pretty much it for setup for Nike sneakers. Now that you have an understanding on Nike, let's go ahead and run through a Shopify setup. First, let's talk about the resources that you're going to need. You're going to need proxies, some Gmails, and some billing profiles. For proxies for Shopify, I'm going to recommend using live residentials. You can use ISPs if you want, but if the site has proxy protection, you're not going to be able to check out. If you don't have the money for proxies, don't worry. You can run up to two tasks per Shopify site without any proxies. Now, as far as billing profiles, if you're just starting out, chances are you don't have a bunch of credit cards or virtual credit cards, but it's okay. You don't need that many in order to hit. With Shopify, you're able to run the same profiles multiple times on a site. If you check out twice on the same profile, essentially one of the orders will stick and the rest will cancel. That's very common. Running up your profiles as much as you can will increase your chances of copying. Just to start, use whatever cards you have available. If you have two cards that have the same name tied to them, then make sure that the billing profiles are different by adding a different email and phone number. Once you've got all that set up, you're going to want to sign into your CAPTCHA harvesters with your Gmails. Simply head over to the CAPTCHA tab and hit the YouTube button to sign in to Gmails. Hit the plus sign to add multiple harvesters. Each harvester needs to have its own Gmail. I wouldn't worry about placing a proxy with the CAPTCHA. It's recommended that you run one CAPTCHA for every two to three tasks that you're running. If you don't know what ca CAPTCHA is, it's a site's bot protection. It's when the site prompts you with a challenge to, that you have to solve in order to prove that you're human. Recapture is when it asks you to select three fire hydrants or bicycles or streetlights. And HCAPTCHA is a little different and it typically has you draw a box around an image. You will need to solve a CAPTCHA for each task that you run on Shopify. So 10 tasks running on Shoe Palace, you will have to solve 10 CAPTCHAs. You want to open your solvers by pressing the play button. You want your capture solvers open before you start your tasks for a release. So now that we have our capture set up, let's go ahead and make some tasks. Now hit the plus sign on the right to open up task creation. Site, we're going to use Shoe Palace. On the right is your modes. It's already on the mode that we want, safe preload. A quick breakdown of modes. Safe preload is what you want to use when you know the site is going to have capture. So basically almost every single Shopify initial release that you see at 10 a.m. Fast is for restocks when there's no bot protection and safe is for releases that use password pages. 
Like I mentioned, 90% of the time for initial releases, you're gonna wanna use safe preload. Moving on for input, I'm just gonna paste the link. It's important to note that this information should be provided by your cook group, and each site takes a different monitor input. Sometimes you will have to use keywords in order to pick up the product. Whatever you do, do not make up your own keywords. Always use what's provided by your group or NSB's Discord. For sizes, if you want to put random, you can type in RA. Otherwise, put in a size range. Next, hit the Advanced tab to bring up some settings. For delay, you want to have them relatively high when you start your tasks. I like to set these to 8,000. The rest of the info you can leave blank as it's not used for this kind of release. Once you have everything, hit submit to create your tasks. Now, if you're new to Shopify, I wouldn't recommend having more than 10 tasks because remember, you're gonna have to solve a CAPTCHA for each task that you make. You wanna start anywhere from five to eight minutes before the release. Shopify has a queue system, meaning when a site starts to get a lot of requests, they will put you in a line in order to check out. The idea here is you don't wanna start too early because your proxies might get throttled and you don't want to start them too late because you don't want to be exiting the queue after the release time. You can always check the status of queue by starting one task. The status indicator will let you know how long queue is. Also, alternatively, if you're in a cook group, they should ping you when to start Shopify tasks. Once you have everything started, you want to drop those delays from 8,000 to 2,500, 15 seconds before the release time. Shopify is all about speed, so if you don't drop your delays, someone will check out quicker. Delays are something that you might need to mess with in order to hit that sweet spot. 2,500 to 3,500 is a good place to start. That's pretty much it for Shopify Initial. I do want to bring up blue tasks real quick. And for this example, I'm going to use the Jordan 4 Bread Reimagined that just released as that is a good pair to be shooting restocks for. What you want to do is create a new task group, create a task, and for the site selection, select all. For the monitor input, you want to copy keywords directly from NSB's Discord. Mode, you want to choose fast, and you can select sizes or put random. For proxies, I recommend running ISPs as they will be faster than residentials for this. If you hit the advanced tab, there's a couple of extra options you can add. The only thing I put here is run task for 300 seconds, which is five minutes, and the site's currency I put USD. Once that's all done, hit submit, and now you have blue tasks. This is a great way to hit restocks after a big release, so make sure you set up after those 10 a.m. initial releases. That concludes the task setup for Shopify. Remember, the setup for initial is pretty much the same on any site that is dropping at 10 a.m. Eastern. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope I was able to drop some beneficial and useful information for you guys. If I was, a like and a sub would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, guys.